Welcome back to TTC. A couple of years ago, we tested just how out of hand Amazon flashlights are getting with lumen ratings like 90, 100, 120,000 lumens. Well, by popular demand, we're revisiting the website to see how things are going. And yeah, flashlights are now rated 900, 990,000, 1 million lumens. Seriously. So we bought a bunch which may look similar, but all new brands, models, specs, and we're gonna lumen test them, durability test them, and give an update on exactly how and why these lights exist. Also in the last couple of years, we've bought from more than a couple brands that have offered a lot for your dollar. So unlike last time where we ultimately didn't offer you anything all that punchy, we also bought a $100, $130 light that we expect to be pretty up there, but is vastly outnumbered in this group with only 13,000 advertised lumens. Can the Amazon no-name lights beat it? Can they at least all total up to beat it? Let's find out. So we're gonna plop that soda can looking 13,000 lumen light right in the middle of our offerings today, but starting out first with the lowest spec rated Amazon guy today, the Sigo Ball 900,000 lumen flashlight. It comes in a tactical case that says powered and is the only light that didn't advertise a milliamp hour or battery size in the listing. And that's because this light can fit a 26650 cell and runs off of one just fine, but instead provides a smaller 18650 with a spacer. And that 18650 is also dead, not as in not charged. The light, which also didn't have a charging port cover, also doesn't charge with any battery in it at all. The light does work with our own supplied and charged 26650, so that's something to the tune of 523 lumens out of the advertised 900,000. This won't be ranked today as it's basically defective. And with our own cell inside of it, it blinks like it's charging. Real sketchy, would not leave this thing laying around with any power source inside or attached to it. Moving on to the Wissy Rune, the last light today to be advertised at this low, low 900,000 lumen level. It's a dual 26650 style battery light, so a longer handle, but that battery doesn't feel quite right. The two 2650s should weigh about seven ounces combined. This one weighs 5.9, so there's that. It charges at one and a half amps, which is, well, it's okay. But yeah, otherwise it is bright, at least compared to the last one. Time for the integrating sphere. We charge all the lights up to full, then use our custom TK lamp lumen sphere. We wait for the ANSI FL1 standard of 30 seconds, and it's making about 1640 lumens, which is also about the same or a little more than when just turned on. In Candela or Lux from one meter, same thing, it's basically how intense any one spot of the beam is and can give you an idea of its distance capability. That's 2300 Candela, which most of these have a focus route and we can narrow that until just before the beam gets cut up by the Cobb chip design for 27,000 Candela here, so adjusting from 2.3 to 27K. Now is that good? Well, we have to find out by looking at the rest here, but what's not good is this compared to this. Just 0.18% of advertised. That's not this times 0.18, it's times 0.0018 of 900,000. Not great. But hey, 1600 is enough for a decent amount of light. We'll have to see with runtime, real battery size, and durability coming up. Okay, next up is Childbot, who's stepping things up to 990,000 lumens. It looks pretty cool, like a gloss black paint or powder coating over that aluminum body and a digital percentage display of battery level. This also takes a 5,000 milliamp hour 26650 battery that they do provide, but does weigh 2.7 ounces, which feels even stranger, almost hollow-like. And after the 30-second FL1 period, this is looking to make 1,340 lumen. Yeah, not all that spicy. Cheapest light on the day, but also even looking at Candela here, 1.6 to 16,000. Well, not lighting the world on fire, which theoretically it should be as 990,000, even assuming modern high-grade LEDs, this should be soaking up around 10,500 watts, 0.13%. Looking a bit rough here. All right, let's try to set the bar a bit higher in price for certain with the $130 Workos TS32. A light rated for 13,000 lumens and Workos or their software and brand side of things have usually done well on this channel per dollar spent. So for 130 bucks, hoping this pays us dividends. It's a pretty cool design, this aluminum handle coming off this soda can looking shape. 
High power lights do get toasty, so this might prove handy. It's advertising IP68 water resistance, and they picture a vehicle driving over it, so we're definitely gonna have to see how it does in durability. It's got two modes, a thrower with a spot focus center beam for a few thousand lumens, and a flood with a ring of LEDs around the center that total 12,000 lumens, or turn both on for 13,000. Sort of neat, can be a thrower or a flood or both at the same time. We like that idea, sort of like an Olight Marauder 2 for a lot less coin. But in this case, with swappable common cells, three 5,000 milliamp hour 21700s in this case, that total a very decent 15,000 milliamp hours. But also got us thinking, we have the extra spicy mall cell P45Bs on hand from building power tool batteries that bring the beans. So we figured we could probably give these a go as well, since it appears they do work to see if there's any fun difference. The TS32 makes about 2000 lumens with the center spotlight, maybe 1700, and it peaks around 12,000 lumens with the flood setting out of the gate. And that's just around 13,000, 13,200 when combined out the gate, which after 30 seconds is, okay, 12,400, 12,000, 300. By swapping in our high discharge mole cell batteries, that's again 13,200, but also after 30 seconds, it's still 13,200 lumens, but does drop off soon after that. Now, Workos does offer this light without battery cells, and it turns out the spec with 351D LEDs that we bought is also only supposed to make 12,000 max. So yeah, we're going to call this a W with 100% here, 12 to 13,000 lumens, depending on how you spec it with the LEDs and batteries you choose. It sounds pretty spot on. But what about that candela? The spot thrower setting on this light is good for just around 100,000 candela. Yeah, quite an increase over our current Amazon selection so far. Let's see if we can put a dent in that. This is the Bybon 990,000 lumen rated single 26 650 battery flashlight. And something nice about this is, yeah, it looks very bright. And it has even a dedicated mode button. So if you want just high and off, you can press this top button or use the buttons below to cycle through the settings, which of course they have to include strobe and SOS like all the other Amazon ones for some reason. But you at least have the option on this light to ignore those settings and just choose the highest mode or off. It also charges at one amp, but that is to a single 26650 that does measure at least as much as a known quantity in weight, so that's promising. And the light output is promising too. In the sphere it agrees, 2500-ish lumens, that becomes, after 30 seconds, 2420, 2410. Not gonna break any records here, but it is a Amazon brand name company, so looking fairly good. It's similar light output to a $120 Olight, but for 35 bucks, and I would assume more runtime too, we'll have to see. For Candela, it's also tops among its friends at 3,700, which adjusts up to 33,000 before becoming a sharp square. Still just a quarter of a percent of its lofty claims, but I don't hate it as far as being a flashlight goes. Okay, and rounding out our last 990,000 lumen applicant, we got something a little bit different. Not that it's advertised as being so. Looks a lot like the rest on the page, but this one is a thrower. No focus adjustment, just all thrower all the time, no flood area light effect. It's the Driver Wish Light Link 2, and it does not look all that bright in person. Like in a shop setting, does not light all that much up, but throwers can be deceiving that way. And this one at night with some distance, yeah, I mean that spot is small, but it's willing to travel for the job. This far hill is about 400 yards away. In the lumen sphere, hard to fool just combined light output in the form of lumens though, this model is only putting out 720 lumens. But yeah, this is certainly not its party trick. Candela, on the other hand, this one's small focus spot strategy pays off and racks up a full 125,000 Candela. I knew it'd be high, but damn, that's pretty cool. Imagine if this was 2,000 lumens, like this one, that would be pretty awesome, as it is, 0.07%. Come on, save us 1 million lumen flashlight. This is the most expensive Amazon brand one on the day, Omalite, and it's rated for 1 million lumens. And while the box it comes in doesn't reflect its price point or lumen rating, where it falls short in packaging, it more than makes up for in lack of lumens, all 526 of them. Yeah, this makes as much sauce as like a high power pen light. Except instead of making that 500 lumens in a spot like a pen light might, it spreads that over a wide area in an even less impressive 1,000 to 7,300 candela. Record lows for this one across the board, worst candela, worst lumen output, and highest claim with 1 million, meaning this makes just times 0.0005 of what it's claiming. Ouch. 
Let's get into runtime and real battery size. Something tricky that these all do is advertise runtime on low. So you simply see like 25 hours and nothing else. The Amazon brand lights are up first and this is what that looks like. The Bybon being the one light that we felt put out a lot of it is also the one to keep that up for an extended amount of time and pays for that draining its single battery cell quickest at two hours and 20 minutes. Followed by the Chalbot who really didn't put up much of a showing. The Wissy Rune can at least stay in the 300 to 400 range for a while, four hours. And the Spot Focus Diver Wish and 1 million ohm light, yeah, they cruise at just over 100 lumens forever. You could try to put them back in high, but they just fall back out of it for much longer than even this graph shows, seven hours and 50 minutes and eight hours for the both of them. The big boy TS32 is gonna start out at 13,000, then drop to the mid 2000s and gradually decrease from there. We got two hours and 45 minutes out of it. We've read other people getting mid three hours, but this is what ours did with the included batteries. Batteries that when we charged them took about six hours, peaking at 2.9 amps, which is not bad. 13,900 milliamp hour total measured, and that resulted in 27,400 lumen minutes, which is basically a total of the measurements of lumens we made at set intervals, a sum of comparable light output on a charge from each of these. And these advertised battery capacities are going to help explain some of the story here in runtime and lumen minutes. This 10,000 we got 6,000 worth of charge out of, 6,500 lumen minutes when running. This single 5,000 more like 2,500, which helps to explain its poor showing and the light feeling battery. This 5,000, yeah, we got 5,500 out of it. Sure, it took seven hours to charge at one amp's peak, but yeah, this one continues to look not terrible. Driver wish, they wish it was 10,000, we got 5,400, and this Omelite's 10,000, only 5,000 of charge sent to it. Looking at lumen minutes, it's the TS32, obviously, then the Bybon again, followed by these two. For durability, we're gonna get right into it and just rip the Band-Aid off. The driver wish, the spot focus light we were testing, it didn't last much beyond this group drop. In fact, it cracked from that and broke from one further four foot drop. The only other standout was surprisingly the Omalite, which lasted longest with most drops up to 14 feet, one drop, surprising given its size, weight, and price. The Bybon and work costs both lasted until second drop at eight feet. Nothing special, the work cost even shows the light being driven over by a vehicle, which we had planned to do, but didn't get far enough in our attempts to get there yet. Not good, not terrible, I wouldn't drive over it myself. Overall, these two are the ones we would consider recommending though when looking at everything. This one for just a really powerful, good all around light, and this one for, well, a $35 light that doesn't suck. Despite the impossible lumen claims, those customers that got this one as opposed to any of these when pushing their lumen luck on the website, well, best of the bunch, decent candela, overall light output, and a real battery size. So how did we get here though, lights are a bit higher performing than we tested two years ago, from advertising an already laughable 120K lumens on the craziest claims to everyone nowadays at or around 1 million. Well, since our last look at these, the retailer has since cracked down on many lithium ion rechargeable products and made the product application process much more stringent on those. Submitting new products on the site now requires independent testing and UN 38.3 test summaries on the included batteries. Certain vendors and shipping sources can also be blacklisted and or require additional further testing and documentation of rechargeable products as well. But do you really think this fake 10,000 milliamp hour labeled battery that charges to 6,000 or this 5,000 milliamp hour battery that charged to 2,500 for us are passing in accredited lab testing? Uh, nah. So how is this happening? Well, while we previously said Amazon could simply add additional testing report requirements, including for lumens to milliwatts testing for laser pointers to decibels for horns, etc., a blind spot to this that we didn't consider is product page editing, which needs some policing big time. Yes, you've probably seen it yourself. Specs, features, images of a product you once bought when returning to the page have all since changed, yet being sold as if it hasn't. Reviews and pictures of the product down in the review section now not matching the item page. This leads to things like a box that says 180,000 lumens in the main image to getting boxes with no lumen claims at all, like all of these today, a difference from years past. That allows them to edit the product page specs at will in an ever-increasing game of chicken with what the consumer is willing to believe. The Omalite, for example, even between us buying it for this episode and editing this video, 
went from 980 to 990,000 to 1 million lumens and back down to 990,000 again. And reviews for it citing specs like 900K and from less than a year ago quoting the name of the product with 150,000 lumens in it, all for the same, well, terrible flashlight. So I think you get the idea they revise details about an item weekly in some cases to make the item forever competitive despite the item in stock never really changing. But it of course doesn't stop there with an increase in the difficulty to submit new items. Products that pass the sniff test with the battery being legit one day, next month with a new battery that looks the same is labeled the same but costs them half as much and you guessed it is now half the capacity. Or heck, switch out the entire product altogether but put the same barcode on it and as long as the vendor isn't raising the price, it ships without a second look. So here's the deal. At $35, this specific light ended up being, in my opinion, pretty cool. You'd have to wade through a lot of trash to find something like this, like we did, but maybe it's worth a shot for it to show up to you and see if it's worth it to you in person. Like trying on clothes, which is just Amazon in 2024, I guess. But the real solution to this is buying from real known brands with warranties and US phone numbers and humans behind those phone numbers because these companies known for making flashlights in this case aren't going to risk their reputation on shorting you 50% on a battery or lumen levels for one product sale. Or sure, shop elsewhere and speak with your wallet, but I'd rather see actual progress because any market will eventually become this if made large enough. But for now, until certain fields and specs and titles are locked and a vendor has to submit through a new item process to change any of it and also prove the authenticity of the brand, I'm sure 2 million lumen flashlights will be right around the corner and we'll be here testing real brands and stuff like this mixed in once in a while for fun to cut through the BS. Appreciate you joining us. We make episodes at least every Friday. Click stuff below to join us for those and thanks for watching.